The Greek genocide, including the Pontic genocide, was the systematic genocide of the Christian Ottoman Greek population carried out in its historic homeland in Anatolia during World War I and its aftermath 1914 it was instigated by the government of the Ottoman Empire and the Turkish national movement against the indigenous Greek population of the empire and it included massacres, forced deportations involving death marches, summary expulsions, arbitrary execution, and the destruction of Eastern Orthodox cultural, historical, and religious monuments. According to various sources, several hundred thousand Ottoman Greeks died during this period. Most of the refugees and survivors fled to Greece, adding over a quarter to the prior population of Greece. Some, especially those in eastern provinces, took refuge in the neighboring Russian Empire. Thus by the end of the 1919-1922 Greco-Turkish War, most of the Greeks of Asia Minor had either fled or had been killed. Those remaining were transferred to Greece under the terms of the later 1923 population exchange between Greece and Turkey, which formalized the exodus and barred the return of the refugees. Other ethnic groups were similarly attacked by the Ottoman Empire during this period, including Assyrians and Armenians, and some scholars and organizations have recognized these events as part of the same genocidal policy. The Allies of World War I condemned the Ottoman government sponsored massacres as crimes against humanity. More recently, the International Association of Genocide Scholars passed a resolution in 2007 recognizing the Ottoman campaign against Christian minorities of the empire, including the Greeks, as genocide. Some other organizations have also passed resolutions recognizing the Ottoman campaign against these Christian minorities, as genocide, as have the parliaments of Greece, Cyprus, Sweden, Armenia, the Netherlands, Germany, Austria and the Czech Republic. Background The Greek presence in Asia Minor dates at least from the Late Bronze Age 1450 BC. The Greek poet Homer lived in the region around 800 BC. The geographer Strabo referred to Smyrna as the first Greek city in Asia Minor, and numerous ancient Greek figures were natives of Anatolia, including the mathematician Thales of Miletus 7th century, the pre-Socratic philosopher Heraclitus of Ephesus 6th century BC, and the founder of Cynicism Diogenes of Sinope 4th century BC. Greeks referred to the Black Sea as the Euxinos Pontos, or Hospitable Sea and starting in the 8th century BC they began navigating its shores and settling along its Anatolian coast. The most notable Greek cities of the Black Sea were Trebizond, Sampsunta, Sinop and Heraclea Pontica. During the Hellenistic period 334 BC, 1st century BC that followed the conquests of Alexander the Great, Greek culture and language began to dominate even the interior of Asia Minor. The Hellenization of the region accelerated under Roman and early Byzantine rule, and by the early centuries AD the local Indo-European Anatolian languages had become extinct, being replaced by the Koine Greek language. The resultant Greek culture in Asia Minor flourished during the following millennium under the Greek-speaking Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire, whose citizens were known as Byzantine Greeks. The inhabitants of Asia Minor constituted the bulk of the empire's Greek-speaking Orthodox Christian population, thus, many renowned Greek figures in the thousand years from the 4th to 15th centuries AD were natives of Asia Minor, including Saint Nicholas 270-343 AD, rhetorician John Chrysostomos 349-407 AD, Hagia Sophia architect Isidore of Miletus 6th century AD, several imperial dynasties, including the Phocas 10th century and Komnenos 11th century, and later Renaissance scholars George of Trebizond (1395–1472) and Basilios Bessarion (1403–1472). When the Turkic peoples began their late medieval conquest of Asia Minor, Byzantine Greek citizens were the largest group of indigenous peoples living there. Even after the Turkic conquests of the interior, the mountainous Black Sea coast of Asia Minor remained the heart of a Greek state, the Empire of Trebizond, until its eventual conquest by the Ottoman Turks in 1461, nearly a decade after the fall of the European territory of the Greeks to the Ottomans. At the outbreak of World War I, Asia Minor was ethnically diverse, its population including Turks, Azeris, Pontic Greeks including Caucasus Greeks, Cappadocian Greeks, Armenians, Kurds, Zazas, Georgians, Circassians, Assyrians, Jews, and Laz people. 
Among the causes for the Turkish campaign against the Greek-speaking Christian population was a fear that they would aid the Ottoman Empire's enemies, and a belief among some Turks that to form a modern nation-state it was necessary to purge from the territories of the state those national groups who could threaten the integrity of a modern Turkish nation-state. According to a German military attaché, the Ottoman Minister of War Ismail Enver had declared in October 1915 that he wanted to solve the Greek problem during the war. In the same way he believed d he solved the Armenian problem. Events Post-Balkan Wars Beginning in the spring of 1913, the Ottomans implemented a program of expulsions and forcible migrations, focusing on Greeks of the Aegean region and eastern Thrace, whose presence in these areas was deemed a threat to national security. The Ottoman government adopted a «dual-track mechanism», allowing it to deny responsibility for and prior knowledge of this campaign of intimidation, emptying Christian villages. The involvement in certain cases of local military and civil functionaries in planning and executing anti-Greek violence and looting led ambassadors of Greece and the Great Powers and the Patriarchate to address complaints to the port. In protest to government inaction in the face of these attacks and to the so-called Muslim boycott of Greek products that had begun in 1913, the Patriarchate closed Greek churches and schools in June 1914. Responding to international and domestic pressure, Talat Pasha headed a visit in Thrace in April 1914 and later in the Aegean to investigate reports and try to soothe bilateral tension with Greece. While purporting that he had no involvement or knowledge of these events, Talat met with Kuskubasi Eshref, head of the cleansing operation in the Aegean littoral, during his tour and advised him to be cautious not to be visible. One of the worst attacks of this campaign attack took place in Phokaea Greek, Phokaea on the night of 12 June 1914, a town in western Anatolia next to Smyrna, where Turkish irregular troops destroyed the city, killing 50 or 100 civilians and causing its population to flee to Greece. French eyewitness Charles Manciot states that the atrocities he had witnessed at Phokaea were of an organized nature that aimed at circling Christian peasant populations of the region. In another attack against Serenkayoi, in Menemen district, the villagers formed armed resistance groups but only a few managed to survive being outnumbered by the attacking Muslim irregular bands. During the summer of the same year the special organization Teskilet Imaz USA, assisted by government and army officials, conscripted Greek men of military age from Thrace and western Anatolia into labor battalions in which hundreds of thousands died. These conscripts, after being sent hundreds of miles into the interior of Anatolia, were employed in road making, building, tunnel excavating and other field work, but their numbers were heavily reduced through privations and ill treatment and through outright massacre by their Ottoman guards. Following similar accords made with Bulgaria and Serbia, the Ottoman Empire signed a small voluntary population exchange agreement with Greece on 14 November 1913. Another such agreement was signed 1 July 1914 for the exchange of some Turks, that is, Muslims, of Greece for some Greeks of Aden and Western Thrace, after the Ottomans had forced these Greeks from their homes in response to the Greek annexation of several islands. The swap was never completed due to the eruption of World War I. While discussions for population exchanges were still conducted, special organization units attacked Greek villages, forcing their inhabitants to abandon their homes for Greece, being replaced with Muslim refugees. The forceful expulsion of Christians of Western Anatolia, especially Ottoman Greeks, has many similarities with policy towards the Armenians, as observed by U.S. Ambassador Henry Morgenthau and historian Arnold Toynbee. In both cases, certain Ottoman officials, such as Sukru Kaya, Nazim Bey and Mehmed Reshid, played a role, special organization units and labor battalions were involved, and a dual plan was implemented combining unofficial violence and the cover of state population policy. This policy of persecution and ethnic cleansing was expanded to other parts of the Ottoman Empire, including Greek communities in Pontus, Cappadocia, and Cilicia. World War I However, after November 1914 Ottoman policy towards the Greek population shifted, state policy was since restricted to the forceful migration to the Anatolian hinterland of Greeks living in coastal areas, particularly the Black Sea region, close to the Turkish-Russian front. 
This change of policy was due to a German demand for the persecution of Ottoman Greeks to stop, after Eleftherios Venizelos had made this a condition of Greece's neutrality when speaking to the German ambassador in Athens. Venizelos also threatened to undertake a similar campaign against Muslims that were living in Greece in the event that Ottoman policy didn't change. While the Ottoman government tried to implement this change in policy, it wasn't successful and attacks, even murders, continued to occur unpunished by local officials in the provinces, despite repeated instructions in cables sent from the central administration. Arbitrary violence and extortion of money intensified later, providing ammunition for the Venizelists arguing that Greece should join the Entente. In July 1915, the Greek chargé d'affaires claimed that the deportations cannot be any other issue than an annihilation war against the Greek nation in Turkey and as measures hereof they have been implementing forced conversions to Islam, in obvious aim to, that if after the end of the war there again would be a question of European intervention for the protection of the Christians, there will be as few of them left as possible." According to George W. Rendell of the British Foreign Office, by 1918. Over 500,000 Greeks were deported of whom comparatively few survived. Quote, in his memoirs, the United States ambassador to the Ottoman Empire between 1913 and 1916 wrote, Everywhere the Greeks were gathered in groups and, under the so-called protection of Turkish gendarmes, they were transported, the larger part on foot, into the interior. Just how many were scattered in this fashion is not definitely known, the estimates varying anywhere from 200,000 up to 1 million. Despite the shift of policy, the practice of evacuating Greek settlements and relocating the inhabitants was continued, albeit on a limited scale. Relocation was targeted at specific regions that were considered militarily vulnerable, not the whole of the Greek population. As a 1919 Patriarchate account records, the evacuation of many villages was accompanied with looting and murders, while many died as a result of not having been given the time to make the necessary provisions or of being relocated to uninhabitable places. State policy towards Ottoman Greeks changed again in the fall of 1916. With Entente forces occupying Lesbos, Chios and Samos since spring, the Russians advancing in Anatolia and Greece expected to enter the war siding with the Allies, preparations were made for the deportation of Greeks living in border areas. In January 1917 Talat Pasha sent a cable for the deportation of Greeks from the Samson district, 30 to 50 kilometers inland, taking care for no assaults on any persons or property. However, the execution of government decrees, which took a systematic form from December 1916, when Bahadun Shakir came to the region, was not conducted as ordered, men were taken in labor battalions, women and children were attacked, villages were looted by Muslim neighbors. As such in March 1917 the population of Avalik, a town of c. 30,000 inhabitants on the Aegean coast was forcibly deported to the interior of Anatolia under order by German General Lehman von Sanders. The operation included death marches, looting, torture and massacre against the civilian population. Germanos Caravangelis, the Bishop of Samson, reported to the Patriarchate that 30,000s had been deported to the Ankara region and the convoys of the deportees had been attacked, with many being killed. Talat Pasha ordered an investigation for the looting and destruction of Greek villages by bandits. Later in 1917 instructions were sent to authorize military officials with the control of the operation and to broaden its scope, now including persons from cities in the coastal region. However, in certain areas Greek populations remained undeported, Greek deportees were sent to live in Greek villages in the inner provinces or, in some case, villages where Armenians were living before being deported. Greek villages evacuated during the war due to military concerns were then resettled with Muslim immigrants and refugees. According to cables sent to the provinces during this time, abandoned movable and non-movable Greek property was not to be liquidated, as that of the Armenians, but preserved. On 14 January 1917 Kosva Ankersvard, Sweden's ambassador to Constantinople, sent a dispatch regarding the deportation decision of the Ottoman Greeks. What above all appears as an unnecessary cruelty is that the deportation is not limited to the men alone, but is extended likewise to women and children. This is supposedly done in order to much easier be able to confiscate the property of the deported. According to Rendell, atrocities such as deportations involving death marches, starvation in labor camps etc. were referred to as white massacres. 
Ottoman official Rafet Bey was active in the genocide of the Greeks and in November 1916, Austrian consul in Samson, Kwiatkowski, reported that he said to him, "'We must finish off the Greeks as we did with the Armenians, today I sent squads to the interior to kill every Greek on sight." Pontic Greeks respond by forming insurgent groups, which carry weapons salvaged from the battlefields of the Caucasus campaign of World War I or directly supplied by the Russian army. In 1920, the insurgents reach their peak in regard to manpower numbering 18,000 men. On 15 November 1917, Ozakam delegates agree upon a creating unified army composed of ethnically homogeneous units. Greeks are allotted a division consisting of three regiments. The Greek Caucasus Division is thus formed out of ethnic Greeks serving in Russian units stationed in the Caucasus and raw recruits from among the local population, including former insurgents. The division took part in numerous engagements against the Ottoman army as well as Muslim and Armenian irregulars, safeguarding the withdrawal of Greek refugees into the Russian-held Caucasus, before being disbanded in the aftermath of the Treaty of Poti. <laughs> Greco-Turkish War After the Ottoman Empire capitulated on 30 October 1918, it came under the de jure control of the victorious Entente powers. However, the latter failed to bring the perpetrators of the genocide to justice, although in the Turkish courts martial of 1919-20 a number of leading Ottoman officials was accused for ordering massacres against both Greeks and Armenians. Thus, killings, massacres and deportations continued under the pretext of the national movement of Mustafa Kemal later Ataturk. .In an October 1920 report a British officer describes the aftermath of the massacres at Iznik in northwestern Anatolia in which he estimated that at least 100 decomposed mutilated bodies of men, women and children were present in and around a large cave about 300 yards outside the city walls, the systematic massacre and deportation of Greeks in Asia Minor, a program which had come into effect in 1914, was a precursor to the atrocities perpetrated by both the Greek and Turkish armies during the Greco-Turkish War, a conflict which followed the Greek landing at Smyrna in May 1919 and continued until the retaking of Smyrna by the Turks and the Great Fire of Smyrna in September 1922. Rudolf Rummel estimated the death toll of the fire at 100,000 Greeks and Armenians, who perished in the fire and accompanying massacres. According to Norman M. Nymark, more realistic estimates range between 10,000 to 15,000 for the casualties of the Great Fire of Smyrna. Some 150,000 to 200,000 Greeks were expelled after the fire, while about 30,000 able bodied Greek and Armenian men were deported to the interior of Asia Minor, most of whom were executed on the way or died under brutal conditions. George W. Rendell of the British Foreign Office noted the massacres and deportations of Greeks during the Greco Turkish War. According to estimates by Rudolf Rummel, between 213,000 and 368,000 Anatolian Greeks were killed between 1919 and 1922. There were also massacres of Turks carried out by the Hellenic troops during the occupation of western Anatolia from May 1919 to September 1922. For the massacres that occurred during the Greco Turkish War of 1919 to 1922, British historian Arnold J. Toynbee wrote that it was the Greek landings that created the Turkish national movement led by Mustafa Kemal. The Greeks of Pontus and the Turks of the Greek-occupied territories, were in some degree victims of Mr. Venizelos's and Mr. Lloyd George's original miscalculations at Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Relief efforts In 1917 a relief organization by the name of the Relief Committee for Greeks of Asia Minor was formed in response to the deportations and massacres of Greeks in the Ottoman Empire. The committee worked in cooperation with the Near East Relief in distributing aid to Ottoman Greeks in Thrace and Asia Minor. The organization disbanded in the summer of 1921 but Greek relief work was continued by other aid organizations. Contemporary accounts German and Austro-Hungarian diplomats, as well as the 1922 memorandum compiled by George W. Rendell on Turkish massacres and persecutions have provided evidence for series of systematic massacres and ethnic cleansing of the Greeks in Asia Minor. 
The quotes have been attributed to various diplomats, notably the German ambassadors Hans Freiherr von Wangenheim and Richard von Kuhlmann, the German vice consul in Samsun Kuchow, Austria's ambassador Pallavicini and Samsun consul Ernst von Kwiatkowski, and the Italian unofficial agent in Angora Signor Tuozzi. Other quotes are from clergymen and activists, notably the German missionary Johannes Lepsius, and Stanley Hopkins of the Near East Relief. Germany and Austria-Hungary were allies of the Ottoman Empire in World War I. The accounts describe systematic massacres, rapes and burnings of Greek villages, and attribute intent to Ottoman officials, namely the Ottoman Prime Minister Mahmud Sevket Pasha, Rafet Bey, Talat Pasha and Enver Pasha. Additionally, the New York Times and its correspondents have made extensive references to the events, recording massacres, deportations, individual killings, rapes, burning of entire Greek villages, destruction of Greek Orthodox churches and monasteries, drafts for labor brigades looting, terrorism and other «atrocities» for Greek, Armenian and also for British and American citizens and government officials. Australian press also had some coverage of the events. Henry Morgenthau, the United States ambassador to the Ottoman Empire from 1913 to 1916 accused the «Turkish government» of a campaign of Outrageous terrorizing, cruel torturing, driving of women into harems, debauchery of innocent girls, the sale of many of them at 80 cents each, the murdering of hundreds of thousands and the deportation to and starvation in the desert of other hundreds of thousands, and the destruction of hundreds of villages and many cities." All part of the willful execution of a scheme to annihilate the Armenian, Greek and Syrian Christians of Turkey. However, months prior to the First World War, 100,000 Greeks were deported to Greek islands or the interior which Morgenthau stated, "...for the larger part these were bona fide deportations, that is, the Greek inhabitants were actually removed to new places and were not subjected to wholesale massacre. It was probably the reason that the civilized world did not protest against these deportations." U.S. Consul General George Horton, whose account has been criticized by scholars as anti-Turkish, claimed, "...one of the cleverest statements circulated by the Turkish propagandists is to the effect that the massacred Christians were as bad as their executioners, that it was 50 to 50." On this issue he comments, "...had the Greeks, after the massacres in the Pontus and at Smyrna, massacred all the Turks in Greece, the record would have been 50 to 50—almost." As an eyewitness, he also praises Greeks for their conduct toward the thousands of Turks residing in Greece, while the ferocious massacres were going on, which, according to his opinion, was one of the most inspiring and beautiful chapters in all that country's history. Topic: <laughs> Casualties. <laughs> 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 For the whole of the period between 1914 and 1922 and for the whole of Anatolia, there are academic estimates of death toll ranging from 289,000 to 750,000. The figure of 750,000 is suggested by political scientist Adam Jones. Scholar Rudolf Rummel compiled various figures from several studies to estimate lower and higher bounds for the death toll between 1914 and 1923. He estimates that 384,000 Greeks were exterminated from 1914 to 1918, and 264,000 from 1920 to 1922. The total number reaching 648,000. Historian Constantine G. Hatsidimitrio writes that, "...loss of life among Anatolian Greeks during the World War I period and its aftermath was approximately 735,370." Some contemporary sources claimed different death tolls. The Greek government collected figures together with the Patriarchate to claim that a total of one million people were massacred. A team of American researchers found in the early post-war period that the total number of Greeks killed may approach 900,000 people. Edward Hale Bierstadt, writing in 1924, stated that According to official testimony, the Turks since 1914 have slaughtered in cold blood 1,500,000 Armenians, and 500,000 Greeks, men women and children, without the slightest provocation." 
On 4 November 1918, Emmanuel Effendi, an Ottoman deputy of Aden, criticized the ethnic cleansing of the previous government and reported that 550,000 Greeks had been killed in the coastal regions of Anatolia including the Black Sea coast and Aegean Islands during the deportations. According to various sources the Greek death toll in the Pontus region of Anatolia ranges from 300,000 to 360,000. Merrill D. Peterson cites the death toll of 360,000 for the Greeks of Pontus. According to George K. Volovanis, "...the loss of human life among the Pontian Greeks, since the Great War, World War I, until March 1924, can be estimated at 353,000, as a result of murders, hangings, and from punishment, disease, and other hardships." Volovanis derived this figure from the 1922 record of the Central Pontian Council in Athens based on the Black Book of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, to which he adds. 50,000 new martyrs, which came to be included in the register by spring 1924. Topic: <inaudible> Aftermath. Article 142 of the 1920 Treaty of Sèvres, prepared after the First World War, called the Turkish regime terrorist and contained provisions to repair so far as possible the wrongs inflicted on individuals in the course of the massacres perpetrated in Turkey during the war." The Treaty of Sèvres was never ratified by the Turkish government and ultimately was replaced by the Treaty of Lausanne. That treaty was accompanied by a "...declaration of amnesty." Without containing any provision in respect to punishment of war crimes, in 1923, a population exchange between Greece and Turkey resulted in a near-complete elimination of the Greek ethnic presence in Turkey and a similar elimination of the Turkish ethnic presence in much of Greece. According to the Greek census of 1928, 1,104,216 Ottoman Greeks had reached Greece. It is impossible to know exactly how many Greek inhabitants of Turkey died between 1914 and 1923, and how many ethnic Greeks of Anatolia were expelled to Greece or fled to the Soviet Union. Some of the survivors and expelled took refuge in the neighboring Russian Empire later, Soviet Union. Similar plans for a population exchange were negotiated earlier at 1913–1914 between Ottoman and Greek officials during the first stage of the Greek genocide but were interrupted by World War I in 1955. The Istanbul pogrom caused most of the Greek inhabitants remaining in Istanbul to flee and migrate from there. Historian Alfred Maurice de Zayas identifies Istanbul pogroms as a very serious crime against humanity and he states that the flight and big migration of Greeks after the pogrom corresponds to the intent to destroy in whole or in part criteria of the Genocide Convention. <inaudible> <inaudible> genocide recognition Terminology <inaudible> 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 The word genocide was coined in the early 1940s, the era of the Holocaust, by Raphael Lemkin, a Polish lawyer of Jewish descent. In his writings on genocide, Lemkin is known to have detailed the fate of Greeks in Turkey. In August 1946 the New York Times reported, Genocide is no new phenomenon, nor has it been utterly ignored in the past. The massacres of Greeks and Armenians by the Turks prompted diplomatic action without punishment. If Professor Lemkin has his way genocide will be established as an international crime. The 1948 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in December 1948 and came into force in January 1951. It defines genocide in legal terms. Before creation of the word, genocide, the destruction of the Ottoman Greeks was known by Greeks as the massacre. In Greek, Ada Sphage, the Great Catastrophe, Ada Miguel Catastrophe, or the Great Tragedy, Ada Miguel Tragodia. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Academic discussion. In December 2007, the International Association of Genocide Scholars (IAGS) passed a resolution affirming that the 1914 to 23 campaign against Ottoman Greeks constituted genocide. Utilizing the term Greek genocide, the resolution affirmed that alongside the Assyrians, Ottoman Greeks were subject to a genocide qualitatively similar to the Ottoman genocide of the Armenians. 
IAGS President Gregory Stanton urged the Turkish government to finally acknowledge the three genocides. The history of these genocides is clear, and there is no more excuse for the current Turkish government, which did not itself commit the crimes, to deny the facts. Drafted by Canadian scholar Adam Jones, the resolution was adopted on 1 December 2007 with the support of 83% of all voting IAGS members. Several scholars researching the Armenian Genocide, such as Peter Balakian, Tainer Akkam, Richard Hovanesian, and Robert Melson, however, stated that the issue had to be further researched before a resolution was passed. Manus Midlarski notes a disjunction between statements of genocidal intent against the Greeks by Ottoman officials and their actions, pointing to the containment of massacres in selected sensitive areas and the large numbers of Greek survivors at the end of the war. Because of cultural and political ties of the Ottoman Greeks with European powers, Midlarski argues, genocide was not a viable option for the Ottomans in their case. Tainer Akkam refers to contemporary accounts noting the difference in government treatment of Ottoman Greeks and Armenians during WWI and concludes that, despite the increasingly severe wartime policies, in particular for the period between late 1916 and the first months of 1917, the government's treatment of the Greeks, although comparable in some ways to the measures against the Armenians, differed in scope, intent, and motivation. Other genocide scholars, such as Dominic J. Schaller and Jürgen Zimmerer, however stated that the genocidal quality of the murderous campaigns against Greeks is obvious. Niall Ferguson has drawn a comparison between sporadic massacres of Pontic Greek communities after 1922 and the fate of the Armenians. Seminars and courses in several Western universities examine the events. These include the University of Michigan Dearborn and the University of New South Wales which has a dedicated research unit. The events are also documented in academic journals such as Genocide Studies International. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Political. Following an initiative of MPs of the so-called patriotic Wing of the ruling Pazak Party's parliamentary group and like-minded MPs of Conservative New Democracy, the Greek Parliament passed two laws on the fate of the Ottoman Greeks, the first in 1994 and the second in 1998. The decrees were published in the Greek Government Gazette on 8 March 1994 and 13 October 1998 respectively. The 1994 decree affirmed the genocide in the Pontus region of Asia Minor and designated the 19th of May, the day Mustafa Kemal landed in Samson in 1919, a day of commemoration called Pontian Greek Genocide Remembrance Day, while the 1998 decree affirmed the genocide of Greeks in Asia Minor as a whole and designated the 14th of September a day of commemoration. These laws were signed by the President of Greece but were not immediately ratified after political interventions. After leftist newspaper IAVGI initiated a campaign against the application of this law, the subject became subject of a political debate. The president of the left ecologist Sinispismos party Nikos Konstantopoulos and historian Angelos Elephantis, known for his books on the history of Greek communism, were two of the major figures of the political left who expressed their opposition to the decree. However, the non-parliamentary left-wing nationalist intellectual and author George Karabelias bitterly criticized Elephantis and others opposing the recognition of genocide and called them «revisionist historians», accusing the Greek mainstream left of a «distorted ideological evolution». He said that for the Greek left the 19th of May is a «day of amnesia». In the late 2000s the Communist Party of Greece adopted the term «genocide of the Pontic Greeks». Genoctonia Pontian in its official newspaper Rizospastes and participates in memorial events. The Republic of Cyprus has also officially called the events Greek Genocide in Pontus of Asia Minor. In response to the 1998 law, the Turkish government released a statement which claimed that describing the events as genocide was without any historical basis. We condemn and protest this resolution. A Turkish foreign ministry statement said. With this resolution the Greek parliament, which in fact has to apologize to the Turkish people for the large-scale destruction and massacres Greece perpetrated in Anatolia, not only sustains the traditional Greek policy of distorting history, but it also displays that the expansionist Greek mentality is still alive. 
The statement added, on the 11th of March 2010, Sweden's Riksdag passed a motion recognizing as an act of genocide the killing of Armenians, Assyrians, Syriacs, Chaldeans and Pontic Greeks in 1915." On 14 May 2013, the Government of New South Wales was submitted a genocide recognition motion by Fred Nile of the Christian Democratic Party, which was later passed making it the fourth political entity to recognise the genocide. In March 2015, the National Assembly of Armenia unanimously adopted a resolution recognising both the Greek and Assyrian genocides. In April 2015, the States General of the Netherlands and the Austrian Parliament passed resolutions recognising the Greek and Assyrian genocides. Topic. Reasons for limited recognition The United Nations, the European Parliament, and the Council of Europe have not made any related statements. According to Constantine Phocidas, professor of modern Greek history at the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, some of the reasons for the lack of wider recognition and delay in seeking acknowledgement of these events are as follows. In contrast to the Treaty of Sevres, the superseding Treaty of Lausanne in 1923 dealt with these events by making no reference or mention, and thus sealed the end of the Asia Minor catastrophe. A subsequent peace treaty Greco-Turkish Treaty of Friendship in June 1930 between Greece and Turkey. Greece made several concessions to settle all open issues between the two countries in return for peace in the region. The Second World War, the Civil War, the military junta and the political turmoil in Greece that followed, forced Greece to focus on its survival and other problems rather than seek recognition of these events. The political environment of the Cold War, in which Turkey and Greece were supposed to be allies, facing one common communist enemy, not adversaries or competitors. In his book With Intent to Destroy, Reflections on Genocide, Colin Tatz argue that Turkey denies the genocide so as not to jeopardize its 95-year-old dream of becoming the beacon of democracy in the Near East." In their book Negotiating the Sacred, Blasphemy and Sacrilege in a Multicultural Society, Elizabeth Burns Coleman and Kevin White present a list of reasons explaining Turkey's inability to admit the genocides committed by the Young Turks, writing, Turkish denialism of the genocide of 1.5 million Armenians is official, riven, driven, constant, rampant, and increasing each year since the events of 1915-1922. It is state-funded, with special departments and units in overseas missions whose sole purpose is to dilute, counter, minimize, trivialize and relativize every reference to the events which encompassed a genocide of Armenians, Pontian Greeks and Assyrian Christians in Asia Minor, and propose the following reasons for the denial of the genocides by Turkey, quote, a suppression of guilt and shame that a warrior nation, a beacon of democracy as it saw itself in 1908 and since, slaughtered several ethnic populations. Democracies, it is said, don't commit genocide, ergo, Turkey couldn't and didn't do so. A cultural and social ethos of honor, a compelling and compulsive need to remove any blots on the national escutcheon. A chronic fear that admission will lead to massive claims for reparation and restitution. To overcome fears of social fragmentation in a society that is still very much a state in transition. A logical belief that because the genocide was committed with impunity, so denial will also meet with neither opposition nor obloquy. An inner knowledge that the juggernaut denial industry has a momentum of its own and can't be stopped even if they wanted it to stop. Topic. Memorials Memorials commemorating the plight of Ottoman Greeks have been erected throughout Greece, as well as in a number of other countries including Australia, Canada, Germany, Sweden, and the United States. Topic see also Academic quotes on the Greek genocide Armenian genocide Assyrian genocide Genocide denial Great famine of Mount Lebanon Greek refugees Istanbul pogrom Ismet massacres Human rights in Turkey The Twenty Classes Megali Idea Republic of Pontus Cappadocian Greeks Tenedo Imbros Kayakoi Topic Notes Topic Bibliography Topic Contemporary accounts Halo, Thea 2001. Not Even My Name, New York, Picador. Horton, George 1926, The Blight of Asia, Indianapolis, Bob's Merrill King, William C. 1922, Complete History of the World War, Visualizing the Great Conflict in All Theaters of Action 1914-1918, M.A., U.S., The History Associates, archived from the original on 1 August 2012. 
Morgenthau, Henry Sr. 1918, Ambassador Morgenthau's Story PDF, equals Garden City, New York, Doubleday, Page & Co., 1919 1918, Ambassador Morgenthau's Story, Garden City, New York, Doubleday, Page & Co. Rendell, G. W. The 20th of March 1922. Memorandum by Mr. Rendell on Turkish massacres and persecutions of minorities since the Armistice. Memorandum, British Foreign Office. Toynbee, Arnold J. 1922. The Western Question in Greece and Turkey: A Study in the Contact of Civilizations. Boston, Houghton Mifflin. Volovanis, G. K. Synchronos Genike Istoria II Pontu Contemporary General History of Pontus in Greek, Athens, archived from the original on 8 November 2015. Secondary sources Atsidis, Vlasis Took Kinema Anexartesias II Pontu Kai Oi Autonomes Elenikes Periaches Sti Sobietic Enos II Mesopolemu The movement for the independence of Pontus and the autonomous Greek regions in the Soviet Union during the interwar period. Bulletin of the Asia Minor Studies Center in Greek, 9 157-196. Retrieved 8 May 2018. Akkam, Tainer 2006. A Shameful Act. Akkam, Tainer 2012. The Young Turks' Crime Against Humanity, The Armenian Genocide and Ethnic Cleansing in the Ottoman Empire. Princeton, Oxford, Princeton University Press. Jorgonopoulos, Evropides 2010. Ada Prospathia Systasis Elenikes Merarchius Caucasu to 1917 Chi Oi Logoi Tes Apotikias Tes The Attempt to Raise the Greek Caucasus Division and the Reasons for Its Failure PDF, First Panhellenic History Congress in Greek, 1 1, 227-251. Retrieved 8 May 2018. Alexandris, Alexis 1999. The Greek Census of Anatolia and Thrace 1910 A Contribution to Ottoman Historical Demography. In Gandikas, Dimitri, Isawi, Charles. Ottoman Greeks in the Age of Nationalism, Politics, Economy and Society in the Nineteenth Century. Princeton, N.J., Darwin. pp. 45-76. Asherson, Neil Black Sea, New York, Hill & Wong, ISBN 0-8090-3043-8. Avedian, Vahan 2009, The Armenian Genocide 1915, From a Neutral Small State's Perspective, Sweden PDF, Unpublished Master Thesis Paper, Uppsala University. Basuni, M. Sharif 1999. Crimes Against Humanity in International Criminal Law, The Hague, Kluwer, ISBN Asterisk Hulse, Carl 2007. U.S. and Turkey Thwart Armenian Genocide Bill, The New York Times, 26 October 2007 Bierstadt, Edward Hale 1924, The Great Betrayal, A Survey of the Near East Problem, New York, Erm McBride & Co. Bloxham, Donald 2005, The Great Game of Genocide, Imperialism, Nationalism, and the Destruction of the Ottoman Armenians, Oxford, Oxford University Press. Ferguson, Nile 2006, The War of the World, 20th Century Conflict and the Descent of the West, New York, Penguin, ISBN 978-1-59420-104. Phocidus, Konstantinos EMM 2004, The Genocide of the Pontus Greeks by the Turks, 13, 14, Thessaloniki, Herodotus. Hull, Isabel V 2005, Absolute Destruction, Military Culture and the Practices of War in Imperial Germany, Ithaca, Cornell University Press, Jones, Adam 2006, Genocide, A Comprehensive Introduction, Routledge. 2010 2006, Genocide, A Comprehensive Introduction, Taylor & Francis, ISBN 978-0-415-48618-7. Violent Uprooting and Forced Migration, A Demographic Analysis of the Greek Populations of Asia Minor, Pontus and Eastern Thrace. Middle Eastern Studies. 54, 622-639. doi, 10.1080-00263206.2014.901218. Kostopoulos Tazos 2007. Polemos chi ethnocathars eta zichasmena plura mias decaetus ethnikis exormasis 1912 
Athens, Bibliorama Levine, Mark, Winter 1998, Creating a Modern Zone of Genocide, The Impact of Nation and State Formation on Eastern Anatolia, 1878–1923, Holocaust and Genocide Studies, 12 393–433, doi, 10.1093, HGS, 12.3.393. Midlarski, Manus I. 2005. The Killing Trap, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Nymark, Norman M. 2001. Fires of Hatred, Ethnic Cleansing in Twentieth Century Europe, Cambridge and London, Harvard University Press. Peterson, Merrill D. 2004, Starving Armenians, America and the Armenian Genocide, 1915–1930 and After, Charlottesville, University of Virginia Press. Rummel, R. J. Statistics of Democide. Chapter 5, Statistics of Turkey's Democide Estimates, Calculations, and Sources. Retrieved 4 October 2006. Tats, Colin 2003, With Intent to Destroy, Reflections on Genocide, Essex, Verso, ISBN 978-1-85984-550-9 Travis, Hannibal 2009, The Cultural and Intellectual Property Interests of the Indigenous Peoples of Turkey and Iraq, Texas Wellian Law Review, 15-601-80 SSRN 1549804, The UN. Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples requires states to provide an effective remedy to indigenous peoples deprived of their cultural, religious, or intellectual property IP without their free, prior and informed consent. The declaration could prove to be an important safeguard for the indigenous peoples of Iraq and Turkey, the victims for centuries of massacres, assaults on their religious and cultural sites, theft and deterioration of their lands and cultural objects, and forced assimilation. These peoples, among them the Armenians, Assyrians, Greeks, and Yazidis of Turkey and Turkish-occupied Cyprus, and the Armenians, Assyrians, Yazidis, and Mandaeans of Iraq, have lost more than two-thirds of their peak populations, most of their cultural and religious sites, and thousands of priceless artifacts and specimens of visual art. Topic further reading Topic Books Akkam, Tainer. From Empire to Republic, Turkish Nationalism and the Armenian Genocide, New York, Z Books, 2004. Andreadis, George, Tamama, The Missing Girl of Pontos, Athens, Gordios, 1993. Barton, James L. 1943, the Near East Relief, 1915-1930, New York, Russell Sage Foundation. Serafian, Era December 1998, Turkish Atrocities, Statements of American Missionaries on the Destruction of Christian Communities in Ottoman Turkey, 1915-1917. Compton, Carl C. The Morning Cometh, New Rochelle, New York, Aristide de Carazzas, 1986. The Inter-Allied Commission of Inquiry into the Greek Occupation of Smyrna and Adjoining Territories, Documents of the Inter-Allied Commission of Inquiry into the Greek Occupation of Smyrna and Adjoining Territories PDF. Fochidis, Konstantinos 2002-2004, Eta Genoctonia ton Elenon tu Pontu The Genocide of the Greeks of Pontus in Greek, Thessaloniki, Herodos. In 14 volumes, including 11 volumes of materials vols, 4-14. Karayanides, Ioannis Omicron Golgothas II Pontu The Golgotha of Pontus in Greek, Salonika. King, Charles 2005. The Black Sea, A History, Oxford, Oxford University Press Karomila, Mariana 2002. The Greeks and the Black Sea, Panorama Cultural Society. Morgenthau, Henry Sr. 1974 The Murder of a Nation, New York, Armenian General Benevolent Union of America, 1929, I Was Sent to Athens, Garden City New York, Doubleday, Doran & Co., 1930, An International Drama, London, Gerald's. Hoffman, Tessa, ed. 2004, Vervolging, Vertreibung und Vernichtung der Christen im Osmanischen Reich 1912-1922 in German, Münster, Lit. pp. 177-221, ISBN 978-3-8258-7823-8. Hausepian Dobkin, Marjorie. Smyrna 1922, The Destruction of a City, New York, New York, Newmark Press, 1998. Lieberman, Benjamin 2006. Terrible Fate, Ethnic Cleansing in the Making of Modern Europe, Ivan R. D., de Marat, Jean. 
The Great Extirpation of Hellenism and Christianity in Asia Minor, the historic and systematic deception of world opinion concerning the hideous Christianity's uprooting of 1922 Miami, F. L. Athens, G. R. A. Triadophilus Papadopoulos, Alexander. Persecutions of the Greeks in Turkey before the European War, on the basis of official documents, New York, Oxford University Press, American Branch, 1919. Pavlides, Ioannis. Pages of History of Pontus and Asia Minor, Salonika, G.R., 1980. Shaw, Stanford J., Shaw, Ezel Curl, History of the Ottoman Empire and Modern Turkey, Cambridge University. Dominic J. Schaller, Jürgen Zimmerer, eds. 2013 2009. Late Ottoman Genocides, The Dissolution of the Ottoman Empire and Young Turkish Population and Extermination Policies. Routledge. ISBN 978-0-415-48012-3. Eric Schuberg. The Making of the Greek Genocide Contested Memories of the Ottoman Greek Catastrophe, ISBN 978 one 325 5 2016 Schenk, Robert. America's Black Sea Fleet, The U.S. Navy Amid War and Revolution, 1919-1923, Naval Institute Press, Annapolis, Maryland, 2012 Totten, Samuel, Jacobs, Stephen L. 2002. Pioneers of Genocide Studies CLT. New Brunswick, N.J., Transaction Publishers. ISBN 978-0-7658-0151-7. Sirkinidis, Harry. At last we uprooted them. The Genocide of Greeks of Pontos, Thrace, and Asia Minor, through the French Archives, Thessaloniki, Kyriakidis Bros, 1999. Ward, Mark H. The Deportations in Asia Minor 1921-1922, London, Anglo-Hellenic League, 1922. Topic. Articles Bjornland, Matthias. The 1914 Cleansing of Aegean Greeks as a Case of Violent Turkification. Journal of Genocide Research, Vol. 10 Issue 1, March 2008, pp. 41-58. Halamides, Nikolaus. The Greek Relief Committee, America's Response to the Greek Genocide. Genocide Studies and Prevention, Vol. 3 Issue 3, December 2008, pp. 375-83. Clapsis, Antonis Violent Uprooting and Forced Migration, A Demographic Analysis of the Greek Populations of Asia Minor, Pontus and Eastern Thrace. Middle Eastern Studies. 54, 622 to 639. doi 10.1080/00263206.2014.901218. The 1914 Persecutions and the First Attempt at an Exchange of Minorities Between Greece and Turkey. Balkan Studies, 26, 2, 389-413. Vryonis, Sparrows. Greek Labour Battalions in Asia Minor. The Armenian Genocide, Cultural and Ethical Legacies, ed. Hovanesian, Richard, New Brunswick, N.J., Transaction Publishers, 2007, pp. 275-90. Tainer, Akkam, 2009. The Greek Deportations and Massacres of 1913-1914 A Trial Run for the Armenian Genocide. The Academic Conference on the Asia Minor Catastrophe Paper, IL, USA. Sait, Satinoglu, 17-19 September 2010. The Pontus Independence Movement and the Greek Genocide. Three Genocides, One Strategy International Conference, Athens. Topic. External links Bibliography at Greek Genocide Resource Center. Massacre of Greeks charged to the Turks. The Atlanta Constitution. 17 June 1914. Reports massacres of Greeks in Pontus, Central Council says they attend execution of prominent natives for alleged rebellion." The NY Times. Sunday 6 November 1921.